Hi guys, welcome back. So today I'm doing a Python tutorial on how to scrape data from Gopi sites. Now the first thing that we'll do is we'll check if Selenium really does the job in scraping data from Gokis. And the second thing will be checking the server API responses using an inspect element. The third thing will be using an API program to send get requests and getting a better understanding of those responses from the server. The fourth thing is we write a sample code for this particular program that scripts data from bookies. Now, I hope you guys will enjoy this video and let's get into it. If you're scraping data from a website, then the chances are right that you have a piece of code like this. However, if you want to scrape data from a bookie site, then this is not going to be the case. Now, I'm going to run this piece of code. Okay, you can see that I have an error here. Uh, I'm going to maximize this and inspect my traceback. So it's a selenium.common.exemptions.no such element exemption. So if I try to go through this, you can tell that Selenium was able to find the first 10 values. However, when we go to the 11th value, Selenium did not find an expert that matches this element. Now, the reason as to why this happened is, it seems that this website did not load everything when the page was opened. Now, this happens because most sites use hidden APIs to load more data as you scroll through them. Now, to solve this, we'll head over to this particular website. Uh, this one, I'm going to refresh. And right click and go to inspect. I'll click on network and under network you can see fetch slash XHR. Now these these are the some some communications between the server or rather the responses to client requests from the server. Now if I try to scroll, okay, you can see we have another response here. This is page two with a limit of 10. This was page one with a limit of 10 again. Uh, I'm going to click on page two so that you can see what is happening. So this is a get request. We have the payload. These are the parameters. We have page two, a limit of 10 values and so on. This is a preview of the response from the server. And this is the actual response. Okay, I'm going to scroll again. Well, nice. So we have page three with a limit of 10 again. So I'm going to click on this and this is the get request for this particular response. Let me click on this. This is a get request. The payload, you have page three, a limit of 10, and so on. A preview of the response, and this is the actual response. Now, to get this response in our program, we love to mimic these get requests using an API program. So you can use Insomnia or Postman, they are both free. For my case, I'm going to use Insomnia. Let me click on page one. So this is the response for page one. And I'll copy this request. And head over to Insomnia. So I'm going to create a new get HTTP request. Uh, I rename it to maybe YouTube tutorial. And then I'll paste that URL here and send the request. 
Okay, this is the response from the server. You can see we have a dictionary that implies that you have key value pairs inside this. Now the first one is data and data is a list of dictionaries. You can see. So that means you can look over these dictionaries getting each game 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 items that that is the home team game id match id and so on now to get this response in our program all you have to do is click this drop down and then generate code so this is a python code if you want the code in any other language you can you can check it here so i'm going to copy this I'll go back to my ID and create a new Python file. Uh, YouTube test. So I'll paste that code here. And this is the, let me run it so that, so that I can see what is happening. Okay, this is the response. You can see you have a couple of teams. So it's now more readable. Uh, I'm going to assign this to a variable data. And then we'll print out the type of data. the actual data itself so let me run this again mm -hmm. so the response is a string and this is the data now to work with this more easily we we'll love to convert it into a python object so what we'll do, I'm going to use JSON to convert this string into a Python object. So the first thing is I'm going to import JSON at the top. And then I'm going to assign data into to a JSON object. JSON.loads. Now, the reason as to why I'm using loaders is because data is a string. And to convert a string into a Python object using JSON, you love to use the loaders. The load is used to load a file. So I'm going to put data here. And then I run this piece of code once more. Now you can see that it's a dictionary. Now, to understand these conversions, let me pull over the documentation for JSON encoding. Now this is what happens. When a string is loaded using JSON, an object from that string is converted into a dictionary, an array to a Python list, a string to a string, a number to an integer, and so on true to a true with uppercase t false to a false with uppercase f and null is converted to none okay. now to access so i'm going to access the the home teams for this let me first check out so this is the key for the home team okay so i'm going to copy this and go back to the IDA and print data. And within data, you have a key called data again. And that after that, you have the home team. Now for this, we'll have to loop over them because you can see that it's a list of a couple of games. So 
what I'll do, I'll introduce a for loop here for game in data and then I'm going to indent this and change this to game and this one to I'll actually delete this and put it here so let me comment this line and run the piece of code again okay you can see you have a list of home teams here and we are still getting 10 values so what i'm going to do is we go back to i mean chrome you can see that we had a payload and the limit was set to 10 so what I'm going to do is I'll change this value to a value higher than 10 and see what is going to happen. So I'll go to the get request and here you can see you have a limit which is set to 10. So I'll change this to 100 and run the piece of code again. Now you can see you're getting more teams. get the away teams all you have to do is come here replace this so let me run it again so this is a list of away teams if you want the odds you can go ahead and print them mm, what's the key for the hot yeah you can see we have Sparta with hold of 4, this one with a hold of 11, and so on. Now, I have already done this previously, so I'm going to copy that piece of code so that you guys can see and make sure that the video is not going to be too long. Now, what we'll do is we have NumPy, Panda, so I'm going to import these libraries at the top. Import pandas as pd import ampy as np and lastly we import the date parser parser and yeah we are good to go so i'll be i'll be fetching the game ids the match ids parent match id competition name competition id sports name sport id category home team away team start time home mode draw hold, away hold and so on so at this point i'm looping over the data and i am appending these values using the the keys from the dictionary after i have looped through all of them i am creating a, a pandas data frame and you can see i have a couple of columns for each of these entries here at the top so what is happening is i am assigning these columns to the list that i was creating here and once i have done that uh, I'm saving this data frame in form of a CSV file. So I'm going to change this to YouTube tutorial. Yeah, you can see that it has completed successfully. So what we'll do is I'm going to open my Jupyter notebook so that you can have a better view of this CSV file. I will import pandas to read the CSV and then our data frame will be equals to pandas dot read read CSV and then the directory is 
YouTube tutorial.csv. And then below we can check the head of this data frame. Okay, you can see that we have the game ID, match ID, parent match ID, the start time, and so on. It's soccer. And this is the home team, this is the away team. So if I come here, let me refresh. So this is the first team, actually. This is the home team. And if we come here, you can see that it's actually the same. So you can go ahead and calculate maybe arbitrage opportunities and yeah, you can, you can do much more with this. So I'm going to leave it at that point and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.